Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to MTGO Traders. My name is Taryn, and let's talk about counterfeiting today. So I saw this tweet, I'll put it up on the screen here, uh, from Saffron Olive talking about how he's writing an article, and I definitely will recommend that article once it's live, and we'll put it in the comments and in the, the uh, description of this video once that is live. But it kind of got me thinking about counterfeiting because he's saying there are some people that are actually like boasting counterfeits so much uh, that they're actually showing up in GPs and tournaments all around the country. And there's even a Reddit dedicated to this about how good it is. And of course, all those alpha investment videos debunking or looking at counterfeits and how much they've kind of progressed uh, in the past couple months. And I wanted to talk about it today because I feel like counterfeiting is one of the unsung, not heroes, unsung villains, basically, of kind of how the MTG finance marketplace uh, or how, uh, you know, kind of general players are impacted with the game, how they kind of get scammed out of uh, actual cards and how some people actually just work around the entire system completely, don't even invest in Magic the Gathering at all, and just buy counterfeits. And I can definitely see that argument. I can definitely see people looking at, you know, I want to build a standard deck for my local FNM, uh, but let's say they want to build the blue-white control list or Esper control list. Well, that deck list is going to cost you anywhere in the neighborhood from $400 to $500 for paper cards. And some people just don't want to pay that. So let's say, okay, well, maybe the uh, counterfeits, what, what can I do about the counterfeits? How much are those going to cost? And you know, those are usually much, much, much cheaper. <laughs> you can build your deck with counterfeit cards and be done, um, you know, and then play with that. And from like my standpoint, proxies have always been a thing as far as deck testing for myself and brewing. Like if I don't have the, the stock of a card on me at the time, I'll definitely write another card's name on top of another card and put that into my deck in a sleeve and be like, okay, well this card is this card, I just don't have it yet, or it hasn't come in stock yet or whatever, haven't bought it online to uh, send to my house or whatever. Um, that's definitely something that I've done several times throughout college, especially whenever I couldn't afford cards. Um, you know, we were just playing kitchen table magic with some friends. You know, well, I have most of the deck except for two or three cards. I need a new Lamog. Let's put a new Lamog. Actually, just turn a magic card over and type in, in you know, write in Ulamog, not type in, write in Ulamog. Um, and even myself, I've made proxies through Photoshop, just printing them out and putting them on, like, in front of a sleeved card um, myself, just for, you know, again, kitchen table fun. I think it's when it goes from kitchen table to when people were taking them to tournaments and they're actually like performing in tournaments with counterfeit cards because at that point it's just like, what is happening? <laughs> I definitely think there's a marketplace uh, for counterfeiting as far as like, you know, for proxies as far as tokens go. I think that's probably the best place, honestly, because a lot of people, even MPG Goldfish, uh, Star City Games, a lot of people make really cool tokens that are obviously, you know, just tokens. Like, they don't really exist inside of the actual game itself. They can be tokens of, like, fun, you know, dinosaurs or robots or whatever. Um, kind of cool representations of their of, an, of an, their own artist's, like, style or own company style. That's really interesting and that's really cool. I think it's when it comes to the actual card themselves is when we kind of start stepping over the bounds where, you know, oh, well, we just redid this uh, Teferi Hero of Dominaria piece and we're reselling it. You know, I think that's uh, illegal. <laughs> And before I was even looking at like uh, making this video, I was kind of like refreshing myself on like Alpha Investments videos, looking at his videos and saying, seeing the side by side comparisons of like, oh, here's a real Black Lotus, here's a fake Black Lotus, can you tell? And for me, I'm like, I, I can't tell, honestly. With the older cards, you can tell more frequently because of the color difference. Uh, you can tell more of like the um, kind of just the, the age of the card itself. Like that makes more sense to me from that perspective. But whenever he started showing newer cards, I literally could not tell, period. And that's when I feel like it starts to get scary, especially when people are taking these to tournaments and winning GPs with them. Because at what point does the game stop becoming like almost kind of a public domain, kind of like how uh, Solitaire or whatever is, you know, and you're, you're buying cards because you just are too lazy to make them yourself uh, versus, well, actually, the counterfeits are so cheap and accessible, I'm just gonna buy those instead since they're like a third the price or half the price or whatever. What I'm basically saying is the monetary value of a particular card, like say Hero Dominaria, like it's like 35 to $40 right now, it keeps fluctuating. You know, that card you can get as a counterfeit for like 50 cents because monetary value doesn't mean anything to counterfeits because they're meant to undercut that price point. And from like one perspective, I can definitely see like, oh, that totally makes sense for me because I'm only a, a tabletop player and all I really wanted was cards to look like the other cards so that I can put them in my deck and play them on the, on the kitchen table. That's cool. I kind of get that argument, um, but that kind of facilitates people being like, well, what if I take this deck 
and then I just run it in a tournament and will anybody check my cards? You know, there's a lot of videos with Alpha Investments saying like, you know, you can't tell on, on the first glance. If it was even sleeved, you probably couldn't even tell it was a fake card. You really can only tell by the feel of the card, the gloss of the card, that kind of stuff. The um, like precision of the card as far as like the pixel density of a card. Um, that's something that, you know, super important with counterfeiting. And I think that's something that really nobody, like even a judge at a, uh, like a tournament would even like consider when they're looking at fakes. Now, if somebody showed up with a deck with a non-foil Nexus of Fate, I feel like we would probably have a problem there. <laughs> but again, at the same time, it's like there's not a non-foil version of that card, and so people are having to use the backs of cards anyway, which kind of opens the door to be like, well, if we're just using the backs of cards anyway, why not just do this for every single card? You know, it's kind of like... It's kind of like this weird like anarchy argument that you're trying to have with somebody who's like, well, I don't want to pay the price of a, of a premium card. I'm just going to buy a counterfeit because it's cheaper for my wallet and it's easier to get sometimes. Um, and it's also like very little can there very little people can actually tell the difference. And that's kind of scary, honestly, especially now when like the technology is to the point where it's like it's almost indistinguishable because you have these things where it's like the older the card is. And this is something that Alpha Investments talks in its videos as well. The older the card is, the harder it is to counterfeit because the way, you know, Wizards of the Coast made their cards back in the day. They were way more kind of in-depth, very uh, anti, like, very anti-counterfeiting. They were very into making sure the card was very, very authentic looking. And how, you know, the blue in the middle of it, um, the way it's printed, there are different markings on the card to make sure it's a real card, authentic card, that kind of stuff. Where you have to have a jewel uh, lens to look at it and all that kind of stuff. Um, but then when you get to the newer stuff, really the only thing they're kind of looking for is that foil in the middle on the rares, and almost that's it, you know? Like, especially nowadays when some of the cards are so cheaply made uh, that they curl under, you know, so much, like, so any kind of warmth or any kind of a tech, like a temperature change in the environment. Um, it's, it's very strange to me whenever I'm like, oh, here's a, a fake card, here's a new card, and the new card curls before the fake card curls. And I'm like, hmm, is the, counter, is the counterfeiting industry actually using better quality, like, cardboard than the real company? It's just one of those things where it makes you scratch my head, like, I, I understand why it's there, and I understand why it exists. But at the same time, we need to have countermeasures to prevent this from happening at the tournament level, at the official level. Uh, where, you know, someone could maybe even go to a Pro Tour with a completely counterfeit deck and um, just kind of do really well and like no one even question the cards they have in their deck. I definitely want to know what you guys have to say in the comments below. Do you think counterfeiting is okay? Like, I understand the kitchen table perspective of it. I understand people wanting to have fun, like, casually. Like, I totally get that. And I think that, like, making really cool, like, altered art things is really interesting. Um, but I think it's whenever it comes to where, like, people are playing fake cards at a tournament for money by actual Wizards of the Coast or by whoever's hosting a Channel Fireball or whoever. And people are getting by with cards that aren't even real. I know the argument can be made there that, uh, you know, pro players, it's really about like the psychological aspect, the skill of the player and that kind of stuff in the situation. But at the same time, we have to have some level of uh, realism, some level of authenticity uh, for the cards that are being played uh, in Magic the Gathering. I mean, when I, was, when I was growing up, I ran into a ton of counterfeit Pokemon cards and I didn't even know the difference. I, I, I was like, oh, this card's cool. It's misspelled, but it's cool. It may be a printer mistake, you know, <laughs> something like that. Um, and nowadays in Magic the Gathering, you know, there's like smeared ink uh, prints all the time to the point where you're like, is this card even real? <laughs> or a double print card where they printed on the ink twice and the text is like bold. The entire card is bold for some reason. Like those kind of things happen all the time with Magic the Gathering cards. And it's to the point where it's like, it's very interesting that you can actually kind of slide in one counterfeit versus, you know, 59 other uh, regular cards in a deck and no one would even probably know the difference, especially because we're using sleeves all the time now. So what I think might be important here moving forward for like, you know, tournament stuff, pro tour stuff, maybe have a judge inspect their cards if they're really going to be coming at it uh, from that perspective, trying to make sure the authenticity of each card is real, especially for these more like bigger tournaments like modern, vintage, legacy, those big things. Um, I think proper is also a thing if they're doing side events like Channel Fireball, maybe like walking out and being like, hey, there's a card here from like forever ago, 20 years ago, that's in the proper event. Um, can we check that out, please? <laughs> I don't know if that's like a realistic thing or probably not a realistic uh, thing to uh, think about. Um, I think it's definitely gonna be harder, especially for the standard stuff, especially because of the card quality being in such decline uh, versus the older cards and how kind of rigid and rough they are and how authentic they look and feel. Um, but I do think it's something, especially if you're getting into like the top eight, top four, you know, you're in the semifinals, you're in the finals. If you're on camera at an actual Magic the Gathering event and you have fake cards and you're playing with fake cards on camera, 
for all of the, like the Magic the Gathering like multiverse, like everyone watching the game to see. I think that's a huge problem. And I think that's something that needs to be addressed. They need to talk about it. They need to say, you know, hey, counterfeiting is a big issue. We're trying to combat it. Um, but, you know, if actual players are going to a tournament playing with fake cards, then what's the point of buying real cards? You know, what's the point of going out and buying a box for, you know, except for like, you know, Nexus of Fate, you get the buy box promo for that. Um, but if you want to build a real deck, you know, What's the point? <laughs> and again, I'm just gonna you know say that I, don't, I I support the token market. I think the token market makes total sense. I think it's interesting and fun that you know Wizards of the Coast actually allows actual companies to make fun tokens uh, for their game. That's that makes complete sense. That's really like low key. I think that's really cool. Um, it's just when it comes to the tournament play, that's that's really my, my my big gripe there. But let me know in the comments down below, guys. What do you think Wizards of the Coast can do to help kind of combat counterfeits? Is it like another, you know, like silver little button on the bottom of the card? Is it another marking or whatever so we can tell? Is it, you know, just upping the print quality? Is that is that, is that going to be the, the case? A lot of people have been saying that, you know, the revised stuff with the white borders is a lot easier to fake uh, versus the black border stuff. And, you know, that can be because of the printing ink and all that kind of stuff and the way that they, they use it. Um, but I feel like at the same time, you know, as technology progresses, it's going to be easier and easier for counterfeiters to kind of do what Wizard of the Coast is doing with their stuff. I also think that making sure that the quality of the original card is the highest it can possibly be uh, against a counterfeit card. Like, that's one of the reasons why the older cards are so hard to counterfeit is because of the quality. And I mean, I've said that already in the video, and that's something I definitely want to drill home is like the quality of the card has to be to such a degree that someone can't copy it. And we're at the point now where, you know, counterfeiting is kind of coming up this way, Magic the Gathering quality is kind of going this way, and now there's this intersection where like, oh, it's kind of indistinguishable now, and really the only people that can tell are collectors, people who are buying large sums, uh, people like, uh, you know, Card Kingdom, they're taking in a lot of product, and they're looking at it over with a fine tooth comb, that kind of stuff. Um, I don't think a, like, a judge at a tournament program or tournament event could necessarily tell the difference between a fake card and a real card. But that's kind of my two cents on the subject. I'm not really going to uh, talk about it much more. Um, definitely check out Saffron Owl's uh, article about it on MTG Goldfish. I'll link it in the description in the comments once it goes live. He was just talking about how he was writing it, so I'm sure it'll come out pretty soon, and sometime next week I'll definitely put it in the comments below and shout him out for Rizzle. I really love him. And uh, yeah, I uh, hope you guys like the new kind of uh, angle. Um, kind of shaking it up as far as uh, how I'm doing the, uh, the content, kind of the more like the talking content. Um, my rigs over here as far as like my my computer and stuff and like I kind of set up this little background here And uh, this is actually something I got off Amazon, which I thought was really cool It's like a looks like a patent uh, for uh, Magic the Gathering cards, which I think is pretty cool not counterfeiting this This is a this is a real print that someone did. I'm sure maybe officially or maybe not. I don't know <laughs> uh, Anyway guys like me if you like it subscribe to the channel if you haven't already I really appreciate you guys, and I will see you in the next video. Peace. Thank you for watching the video. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to smash that like button. Subscribe to the channel for more awesome MTG content just like this. And make sure to tap the bell icon to be notified whenever a video is made live. If you want to keep watching content, here are two more videos for you. This video and many others are sponsored by MTGO Traders and Cape Fear Games. Buy and sell digital singles to build your online collection today with MTGO Traders, and get your paper singles, accessories, and much more from Cape Fear Games. Whatever your magic needs, both places have you covered.